I've seen you again. Hopefully, at this point, you are convinced that management information systems can effectively support individual business transactions, such as customer orders or manufacturing orders, moving along business processes. Organizations have developed an absolute dependency on these so-called transactional systems, or transaction processing systems, TPS. If the transaction processing system of a bank fails, the bank grinds to a halt. The same goes for most factories, service companies, and government units. The basic groundwork is increasingly directly controlled by these systems. Doers, those employees actually getting the operational work done, rely on these systems to trigger, record, or even fully carry out their activities, many of which, such as bank transfers, take place solely in the digital realm. So. Are you implying that management information systems are useful only for doers at the bottom of the pyramid, but not for deciders higher up in the hierarchy? Or do you really believe that managers will get their fingers dirty using information systems themselves? That is an excellent question. Before I attempt to answer, however, let me pose it back to you. How about decisions? Obviously, in the business world, taking the right decisions is at least as important as properly carrying out the transactional or operational work. Do you think that management information systems can help employees in decision making? How? Could you pause the video for a minute and write down a few examples of business decisions and take a moment to reflect on how could management information systems effectively support them? Well, I hope you did give it a try. If past experiences with my students are any guide, chances are that you somehow struggled to answer this apparently simple question, because the various decisions that come to your mind seem to impose very disparate requirements to the information systems. The reason is that there are different types of decisions, which, in turn, require different types of supporting management information systems. Obviously, there are many ways to sort out business decisions according to their various traits. Thus, we could classify decisions according to how structured or well-defined the decision-making process is. We could also focus on their repetitiveness. Are they one-off decisions, or do we face the same type of decision periodically, and if so, how often? Or we could look at how wide-ranging is their impact, whether they are strategic, tactic, or operational. And certainly, we could ask what type of employees are taking these decisions, top managers, middle managers, and so on. Luckily enough, these key characteristics of business decisions tend to be highly correlated or change in sync. Thus, just one classification will approximately reflect or bundle together several traits. Thus, at one end of the spectrum, we can identify highly structured decisions. In those, the alternatives or choices are known and clearly specified. The logical process or sequence of steps to be followed to take the decision are equally clear, rational, and determined. Thus, the information used during the analysis is also well specified. These highly structured decisions tend to be very frequent, repetitive, be operational in nature, and are typically taken by operational personnel at the base of the organizational pyramid. At the opposite end of the spectrum are the unstructured decisions. The alternatives or choices are not specified in advance, Actually, identifying the alternatives is often a key and difficult step. The decision process is analogously not predefined and is likely to involve a substantial dose of qualitative, subjective assessment and reasoning. Thus, the information to be used during the analysis is not predetermined. Unstructured decisions are typically one off. Each decision is unique, different from the others. Tend to be tactical or strategic in nature, and are typically taken by managers 
higher up in the organizational pyramid, potentially supported or advised by consultants and other highly qualified technical personnel. These decisions and the ones in between those extremes impose very different requirements to the supporting management information systems, as we shall discuss in the next videos. This sounds interesting. However, it is a bit abstract. Could you give an example? Certainly. The utmost structured decisions are programmed decisions, particularly those that can be automated. An example would be reordering office supplies or components used in an assembly line. The inventory management process will have established clear guidelines and procedures, whereby, for example, whenever the stock of a given product falls below a specified reordering point, a predetermined reorder quantity is purchased from the approved provider. In the extreme cases, these are actually no longer decisions and become simple routine transactions that can be fully automated and implemented by the management information system without human intervention. In other cases, even though the rules are clear and the management information system can trigger the decision and suggest the choice, in this example, which product to order, when, the amount and the supplier, it is still subject to manual or human confirmation of the decision, as well as to a regular supervision and review of the decision process itself. In this case, the inventory management parameters, reorder point and quantity, provider, and so on. It is worth mentioning that being structured, programmed, or even automated does not imply that the decision is obvious or simple from a management or business viewpoint. It might reflect a conscious choice by the management to apply a standardized, pre-specified decision routine to a complex but repetitive decision, for example, to speed up response or cut analysis costs. An example would be the automated trading systems that buy and sell stocks, options, and other financial products, and currently account for most of the shares traded on exchanges, such as the New York Stock Exchange. At the opposite end, we can find strategic decisions, such as whether to merge with another company, enter a new market segment or product category, or a new major geographical market such as China. The alternatives are often not known in advance, for example, which new line of products to introduce. The decision process is not predefined and requires substantial qualitative analysis. The decision could certainly benefit from the insights provided by relevant information, but it is not clear precisely which one. For example, what do I need to check to decide whether I merge with another company? These decisions are one-off, unique, different from the others, strategic in nature, and taken by top management, advised by consultants. Thus, to recap, Business decisions can be classified along a dimension that somehow bundles together several of the traits that we condition the requirements it imposes on the supporting management information systems. Structuredness, repetitiveness, strategic nature, and hierarchical level of its uses. It ranges from highly structured, programmed, and even automatable decisions to one-off strategic decisions. In the next videos, we shall discuss the different types of management information systems required to properly support this variety of business decisions. Thank you.